I kind of be minded to start with the issue of supply. I think that technology has meant a greater supply of documentary. It's enabled um, more experiments in terms of the subject matters that filmmakers chase, access into the market in the first place, um, and a kind of experimentation with um, in the editing suite with what you can do with the footage you've captured. Um, perhaps, you know, some greater access to the whole world of documentary too, so that the, in terms of the inspirations people find, there's, it's, it's just been very fertile and a big growth area. So I think that's all pretty wonderful and exciting. It does make it harder for the uh, critics and curators and other gatekeepers to watch as much as they can, of course, we can only watch so much, but there's such a wealth of um, the filmmaking now. But, you know, I think that's exciting. You're looking for something um, original and exciting. Um, and with documentaries on top of that, I think, and this goes back to your previous question too, but it, what's fascinating about them, and I think what people are turning to them for is a kind of engagement with the world and the complexity and chaos of the world and uh, a way of seeing other people's responses and filmmakers about, you know, attempts to shape and make some kind of sense of all that chaos and complexity. So fiction features of course try to relate to the world and say something about it but the there's an extra layer with documentary where you're surrendering yourself in the first place to that chaos and trying to approach it more directly and find or well, allow it to come to you perhaps you're not starting with your mind and your creative ideas and then trying to impose them on something that you create you, you there's something more self-effacing about going out into the world and trying to document or record or somehow represent some aspect that is greater than you and then try to make shape, find the shape with that. I was really surprised by how many people voted for the films that came into the top five or six. We had a, a large number of votes that all that would have all five or six films. It was, to me, a very surprising sense of a canon, though, because certainly inside Sight and Sound and me individually, you know, we hadn't really been there before. We hadn't sort of tried to l search for a canon. Um, I have become aware of a sense of, say, those five or six top films being firmly embedded in some sort of academic literature of you go to documentary school and are told to pick up one or two you know, textbooks, then they may be there. But in the greater world, that, that was a surprise to me, but there were very strong, firm feelings about some of those films. To be honest, many, you know, I still have unfinished business with, I still have to go and watch, but um, yeah, a lot. And I, I, I felt, I hoped that that was true for almost everyone who came to that poll, that there were so many films thrown up that there were surprises there, but um, I, you know, there were films I knew perfectly well about that I should have watched and hadn't, um, and there were films I'd never heard of before, um, and filmmakers I hadn't heard of. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll give you some titles that I haven't necessarily actually watched since, but I, I didn't know the work of Pio Honkasalo from Finland, um, the, her Three Rooms of Melancholia kept coming up. Um, Artavaj Peleshian, um, his from Armenia, his seasons um, was pretty popular. Um, Hertz Frank's um, Ten Minutes Older, I believe. Um, but I kind of like to think that everyone could throw out their own lists like that, you know, of, of, of films they want now want to watch. You know, we we all had a strong sense that um, the Gigabertov would come very highly because we had done this 
previous poll of just general the greatest films two years before and that had come in the top ten of all cinema uh, that had risen and that was one of the things that gave us a sense that people were looking at documentary more now than ever. Um, so that, uh, I don't think anyone was surprised that a, um, a monumental film like Showa with its vital subject matter came so high. Um, I was very happy to see that some pretty recent films came very highly, The Gleaners and I, Los Angeles Plays Itself, the Joshua Oppenheimer, you know, had only been out for a year or so, so that was a case of something still fresh in people's minds, but yeah, The Act of Killing was very high as well.